good evening, good evening, good evening, good Wednesday evening. I pray that all is well. I'm running a little bit behind, uh, having some uh, difficulties trying to get things set up. Got a new phone and hadn't quite uh, got it all organized yet and uh, a couple of things going on at the church tonight. And uh, so I'm, I'm coming back to uh, COVID-19 set up when we had to go into uh, uh, staying at home, we started the pop-up message. So I'm going back to to our old school. Amen. But I bless God for you guys tonight. I pray that all is well. Uh, bear with me. I'm running late tonight. Uh, like I said, due to a couple of things I'm trying to get set up. And I want to come back in. Uh, tonight and 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 go back into our lessons that we've been studying Romans, the book of Romans. And I pray that God will find you right now in perfect peace. I pray that all is well with you guys, all that are chiming in tonight. I bless God for each and every born again believer, uh, not just in this ministry, but uh, born again believers all over the world. I thank God for an opportunity that uh, uh, he reached way down and saved us through uh, that, that redemption blood of Jesus Christ that saved us, saved us from the wrath to come. So I, I just thank God for this opportunity tonight to come in and share a word with you guys. And I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit that we would be, uh, uh, that our minds would be illuminated with the, the, the true word of God that uh, we'll be able to see the scriptures more clearly and that it speak to our spirit, man, that we will grow, that we'll grow in the power of the Holy Spirit, that, that we can continue to uh, uh, understand what God is saying about salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, knowing what he's saying to the body of believers, how we're saved and how he justified us. And we want to uh, get a good understanding about that. God justified us uh, through what Christ did upon on that cross. Uh, uh, we are justified uh, 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 by what Christ done. And it's all about Christ. And it's not about nothing that we did to be justified. We are justified by faith and believing what Christ did upon that cross, coming to him as a sinner and receiving him as our savior and, and, and understanding that it's all in, in Christ Jesus, that we got to put it all on Christ. Everything we have to put it on the cross, we got to put it on Christ. Why? Because we're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did upon Calvary. Amen. It, 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 oftentimes we want to reverse that thing and think we're saved because it's something that we did. It's something that we do. It's something that we had to do. It. It, the, the word of God said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So where did it begin? It began by believing upon Christ, believing upon Christ. We, I, never one time did it say, man, if you believe in yourself, then you shall be saved. Man, if you put everything upon you and your goodness and all your works, then I will save you. God never told man to work for his salvation because man can never offer God a good enough sacrifice to be saved. Oh, but we really need to get this. We really need to get this because the whole system now of what I'm going to say world system shows that it's something that is good about man that he can be saved. If I can do so much good, then God going to look at me and say, you saved. No, that, no, 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 it don't work like that. We are justified as the believer now. Now we, let's get this right. Let's get it in the right context. As the believer, this is the one that came before Christ, came before the cross as a sinner, and came before him and laid it down and said, I, I'm a sinner. I, I, I can't save myself and I want to be saved. I'm a sinner and, and I got a stone heart and I need a flesh heart. I, I come before you at, at the bottom. I, I just, I, I, I want to be saved. 
and recognize the 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 identity of, of, of the old man. Recognize the identity of a person that's dead in trespasses. Recognize that there's nothing that I can do in my flesh to please God. There's nothing man can do in his flesh to please God. Nothing. Period. Amen. So as we look into this Romans 4, we want to understand what we, we, we was at last week. We was talking about... Uh, uh, what does it mean to be saved and how is man saved? Tonight we're going into Romans 4 and we, we're looking at what the, the scripture will be breaking down tonight. More or less is going to line up with this. What does it look like to be justified by faith? You can take it all. You can take a lot right there. What does it look like to be justified by faith? In other words, I, I believe Christ done everything upon that cross. I believe the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ unto salvation. I believe everything that Christ done, and I believe it by faith because I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But I believe Christ died for my sin. I believe that I've been justified. That means I've been, I've been made, I'm, I'm, I'm clean, I'm free of it. I'm free of any of my sins. All the sins that were put upon that, that I was in when I came before the cross and accepted him, he justified me the moment that I believed upon what Christ did up on that cross for me and you. If you're a born again believer, then that moment that you accepted Christ as your savior, you were justified. Oh, oh yes, you were justified. So, so we look at this. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you right now. We, we thank you right now, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace, Lord God. We thank you, uh, Lord God, for your love that you have for us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, Lord God, to die for our sins, that, that, that you reconciled us back to you, Lord God, and you gave us that ministry of reconciliation. We thank you for that, oh God. We thank you for that blood that redeemed us, oh God. Brought us back unto you, Father God. Lord God, we recognize that it wasn't by our works, but it was all because of your love for us, oh God, that you saved us. Now, Lord, we ask tonight, Lord God, that you would open our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes that we may see clearly, see clearly what the scripture is saying to us today, Lord God. Father, we bless you for this opportunity. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and we say amen, amen, and amen. Looking at Romans 4, good evening, believers, good evening, brothers and sisters. I pray that all is well. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I pray that all is well with you right now, that, that God will find you right now in perfect peace, even in the midst of the storm, standing in Christ, that we, we have peace even in the midst of the storm, because he is our, he is our peace. Amen? Amen. So looking at uh, Romans 4, and as we look at Romans 4, we, I want us to go into, when we go into the scripture, I want us to go in there with the mind of, 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 of listening to what the scripture is saying and not taking it and, 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 and taking it out of context, but taking it as for the scripture is speaking about justification. So I want us to look at uh, 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 this, this analogy or uh, the scripture and what was said in this in Apostle Paul as he was teaching this or as he wrote this epistle, as he wrote this, the, uh, the book of Romans is, is in what his teaching was of justification after he was saved. Amen. After he had come into the knowledge of Christ being a savior. Okay. Because you got to understand, uh, Paul, which was Saul in the beginning, he was zealous for the law. I mean, he would kept the law to the letter. And it, and, and it, it goes on to tell all his credentials before he came Christ. Before he came into Christ, before his uh, uh, mind and before the scriptures were illuminated and before Christ came to him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And then he had the scales pulled off his eyes and then he began to see the, the true gospel. He, he began to see the, 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 the fulfillment of all that he had learned uh, 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 before Everything was illuminated to him. Everything was brought. He, he was. He came alive in Christ. 
Amen. He couldn't see it before then, but in the time that he needed to see it, when God opened his eyes, then Paul was able to understand this is what he's teaching now. So you got to understand that the Judaizers were still trying to, to get uh, 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 even the believers that were believing upon Christ, some of them that was there when Christ was crucified, or some of those that were sitting up on the apostles, they were still coming to him with the circumcision. They were still trying to bring the law to him. And, and you got to understand, Paul was zealous for all this before he came into the knowledge, the true knowledge of Christ and the true knowledge of the gospel. Amen. We too have to come into the true knowledge of the gospel. Because why? Because the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe it. Amen. We got to understand that it's the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God to those that believe. Well, it's to, for salvation to those that believe it. In other words, my salvation comes from believing upon what Christ did upon the cross. My salvation comes from believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. My salvation is solely based upon what Christ did upon the cross. We have been justified solely as the believer now. As the believer. I got to get it right. I want to make sure that we understand this is to the believer. This is to the believer. If, we're, if you're not believing upon Christ solely by being saved by grace through faith in what he did upon the cross... That grace, then, 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 it, it, if you add anything to grace, then it's not grace anymore. I, I say that all the time. I repeat myself over and over and over because I really want us to get an understanding that that we were justified by faith through what Christ and what Christ did. We want to understand that we're justified by uh, uh, faith in what Christ did. On Calvary. Well, preacher, you preach that all the time. Well, I can't preach nothing else but the gospel. If I preach anything else, then then it, it'll be a uh, non effect. The, then I make the, the cross of Christ a non effect. If I preach anything else other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'll be making the cross of Christ a non effect. That means it won't it won't mean nothing to you. See, we got to make sure that we stay we we got to stay rooted in knowing that it's all on Christ. It's all about Christ. It's everything has got to be about Christ. Amen? Okay, here it is. Here it is, guys. Ro uh, Romans 4. Good evening again, guys. Good evening to those coming in. I'm late. And I, so y'all, I apologize. But, 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 but come on with me. Come go with me tonight. Come go with me tonight because I really need us to get this in our spirit, man. Amen? And, and prayerfully, somebody would be saved tonight. Not only that, the body of Christ would be blessed to even be more enlightened in the scriptures tonight. Amen. Here it is. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory. If we are justified by works, then we have something to glory in. No, we can't. The Bible said that, that we should not glory in nothing but God. We should not glory in our flesh. All the glory belongs to God. Glory belongs to God. Glory belongs to God. We give God the honor. We give God the praise. We give God the glory. It is. And he said for, uh, it said for what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. Pay attention. Pay close attention. Because I'm going to take you somewhere. It said right then, it said, For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And we got to understand and go back even into the promises that God promised Abraham. Abraham was before the Mosaic law was even given. Abraham was. And on our paperwork that we have for those who have the sheet, and if you don't, you can go into the website, Born Again Believers website, and, and you can get the worksheet of, that we're working on tonight. And, and you can find out more information about what we're saying in the, the scripture. Here it is. And it said, for if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. So, in other words, if Abraham was going to glory in anything, then he would glory in his flesh. Okay? So, if we, as the body of believers, or we come before 
God or come and say that I'm going to heaven because uh, I do so good and because I did this and I did that and I did this, then guess what? The only person that can glory in that is you. You can glory in yourself, but you can't glory in God. Amen. Well, I passed. I know I'm going to heaven because I done did everything right from the day I was born to now. I know that's why I'm going to heaven. Then no, don't nobody get no praise, no glory out of that, but your flesh, period. God look at you and say, you still, you're all your righteousness, but filthy rags unto me, period. Because I want us to go back and I want us to stand on this to know that everything, that anything uh, that was sacrificed unto God has to be perfect. Amen? Perfect. No spot, no blemish, no nothing. Perfect. Can anybody raise their hand if we was in class now and say they've been perfect all their life? Anybody? I want somebody to just lay all the way to my give a thumbs up if you've been perfect. Give me a thumbs up if you've been perfect all your life. Amen. I thought I thought I wasn't gonna get no thumbs up. This is why if Abraham had worked to make God be pleased with him, then what his works would have been unprofitable. Because God is not pleased with man's works. In the instant that this is something that I did to be justified. If I say I was justified because I did something, then I then it ain't no good. Period. It's no good. So so come on, I, I got to go with this. And it said, but not before God. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. I I I, I got I, John 3:16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it. Upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. He that believe it upon him should have everlasting life and should not perish. He that believe it on him. Not he that worked so hard in the church. Not he that came before a certain denomination. Not he that said, well, I gave everything to such and such. No, it said that he that believe it. Upon him. Yeah. Well, let, let, I, want, I want to go. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Here it is. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. That if I work, then I need to be paid for. It. Okay? But grace was given to us by God. It was nothing is unmerited favor. There's nothing that we could have done to receive grace because grace was not grace if you work for it. If you work for grace, then you can't call it grace. If you work for something, then you will be paid for it. God gave his only begotten son. It wasn't because of man was so good. It wasn't because man's heart was so right. No, he gave his only begotten son because man's heart was ratchet. Man's heart was tore up. Man's mind was corrupt. Man flesh was no good, so he gave his son to save sinners. He gave his son to save the ungodly. God did not give his son to save the righteous. He gave his son to save us from sin. The wrath of God was upon Christ for sinners. I don't know why we're so scared to say that you were a sinner. And the only way that we can be saved is that we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to believe upon him. We got to come before him. As I said, we're going to get into this. I want us to really get this. I want to nail it down in us so that we can understand that this, this, this justification process. And he said, uh, uh, but to him that worketh not, but believe on him that justify the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Let me back this up because I really want you to get this. I really want I really want this to sink in. I, I want you to pay attention to this in the power of the Holy Ghost. Ask right now, Holy Spirit, to open up your spirit, your eyes and your spiritual ears to hear what I'm saying. Because this is based upon our father Abraham. Listen to this. But to him that worketh not, but believe on him that justified. The ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Pay attention to these two words. Work it not. Okay? Work it not. He, pay attention to this. 
believe it on him. Guess what? That justified the ungodly. If you say you came before God and you was already right and all you had everything lined up. So you know what? I'm going to go to church because I got everything in line. I'm right on point. I'm right where I need to be. So I'm going to start going to church. Guess what? You won't never get saved like that. Yeah, I said it. You would never get saved saying, I'm going to go to church and I'm already where I need to be. I've been doing pretty good. I've been a good old boy. I've been a good old girl. I'm right on point. I've been doing it just right. God can't never save a person with a mindset like that. <laughs> God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish. Well, why should? how can I perish unless I'm in sin? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. See, you see the difference? So, so, so what, what the scripture is telling us right now is that God came and gave, he gave his only begotten son to die for sinners. He gave his only begotten son to die for the ungodly. Jesus went up on the cross to take the wrath of sin. I don't know why we got it so mixed up that everybody thinks they go to church they're holier than thou. It ain't about you. It's about Jesus Christ. It ain't about Pastor Cromwell. It's about Jesus Christ. Christ's blood is what redeemed us. We got to put this tough thing. We got to so flip-flop this day and time. We think it's all about us. But it's about Jesus. And until we can come to that, that, to that, uh, 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 to acknowledge that, then it's going to be hard for us to truly see the cross of Christ and truly receive the justification that he done upon Calvary. Why? Because it feels like it's something that I can do to help him out. He don't need our help. God don't need our help. No, he don't need our help to help us to, to, to be saved. He gave his only begotten son. The, 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 the beef of this whole uh scripture or this whole chapter is to know that but to him that work it not okay but believe on him that justified the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness your faith is counted for righteousness because you believe Christ died for your sin. You came before him as a sinner. You believe he died for your sin. You believe that he washed away your sin. You believe that you were made whole in Christ. You believe that Jesus did it. It is nothing that you did. It ain't nothing that you worked to receive. Come on, we got to get that out of us. I worked to go to heaven. No, you didn't work to go to heaven. I worked now. Christ did the work. Christ finished the work. It's a finished deal. It's a done deal. Christ did finish the work. We got to believe it by faith that he finished it. And then you got to believe by faith that you've been justified because you believe it. Because you came to him as a sinner. And you admit you was ungodly. You admit that I'm a sinner. And I received him as I received Christ by faith as my savior. And now that I've done that, I allow him to be the Lord of my life. Amen. At first got to start at this point, come before him as ungodly, come before him as sinner, and then a, a, a believe upon him. The word said that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God had raised Jesus up from the dead, then I shall be saved. The Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I ain't seen no way in there that would say God so loved the world for whoever work it out and keep doing good and keep going to church and keep paying all their money to church. They're going to go to heaven. He ain't said nothing about that. Anytime that we put us in it, we make it about flesh. We got to keep it upon Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's got to be about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Why? Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. It, it is Jesus that laid down his life to save sinners like me and you. It's God's love for us that he gave his only begotten son that he wants the glory. He wants the praise. He wanted all. See, the Bible in Romans 1 said that man started to worship the creature more than the creator. See, we got it so twisted now that we want to Worship each other and worship stuff more than the creator. But see, the justifier is Jesus Christ. We were justified by what Christ did upon the cross. Not by works that any man should boast. Come on, let's get into this. 
Romans 4 said, what does it look like to be justified by faith? Abraham, whom God justified by faith 430 years before the law. Abraham was justified 430 years before the law came. So that lets you know right there that the law did not justify nobody in the Old Testament. Okay? Let's pay attention to this. Adam and Eve fell in the garden. Okay, guys? Let's remember that. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, that made us sons and daughters of, of sinners. Okay? They, they brought sin into the world. So that made everybody after that sinners. Okay? The only one that didn't come out of sin is Jesus Christ. He was born of the Holy Ghost through the Virgin Mary. He's spotless. He is God. He's part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He is God. He is perfect. He is sinless. But he walked upon his earth in the flesh. But he sinned not. Perfect sacrifice. Amen. Let's understand that the law was given to show man how sinful he is. The law is given right now that a man can come up. If a man come up to you right now and tell you that he's keeping the law, then you are able truly through this in the Holy Spirit to call him a liar. Because the devil is a liar. <laughs> he's a liar because he can't keep the law. It was never meant for him to keep the law. The law was meant to show you how sinful we are. And I don't know why people want to continue to throw the law at people like that. The law is good. The law is what brought you to the cross. The law is what brought me to the cross. Because the law made me see how sinful I was. The law made me see how no good I am. That's what the law does to men. And the law brings you to the cross. So understand that this Abraham was justified 430 years before the law was even brought to the table, before Moses even went up and, and, and into the mount and got the law, Abraham had already been justified. Hallelujah. Why? Uh, by believing. Come on, I, I got to go with this. I got to go with this. Believe God and that belief in God was counted for his righteousness. Believe in God right now that we are justified by faith through what Christ did upon the cross, it's the righteousness of Christ that'll be in us. It's the righteousness of Christ, not the righteousness of me, the righteousness of Christ. I'm justified through what Christ did upon the cross, and it's the righteousness of God. It's righteousness of Christ in us now. It's not the righteousness of no flesh, period. Your flesh is not righteous. Because the Bible said, all our righteousness are as but filthy rags unto God. So why would I want my righteousness, to, why would I want to stand on my fleshly righteousness? It's no good, period. I don't even want God to see what I, I don't never want no credit for anything. I give it all to God. I give all the praise and all the honor to God. And we got to learn to do that. We got to, I don't care what it is, I glory be to God. Well, you know what you show saying? So glory be to God. Well, you know what we show like with glory be to God. Well, you know what, Pastor? You show glory be to God. Why? I don't I don't want no, I don't get no, I don't need no no uh, appreciation and nothing like that. It all goes to God. It all goes to Jesus. Well, Pastor, well, you sure did and no, I didn't. I give it to God. <laughs> I want to give it all to God. Everything. Glory be to God. That's what you're gonna hear me say. Glory be to God. Here it is. Here it is. It said, likewise, here's what the word of God says to the believer today about being, believing God. But to him who does not work, but believe on him who justified the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Your faith is accounted for righteousness when you believe God gave his son. When you believe God, say I'm a sinner. See, see yourself just like God looks down upon man that's not saved, a sinner, ungodly. And if everybody would just be honest with you, you'll be able to raise your hand like in class and say, that's me. But I believe Christ. I believe God gave his only begotten son. I believe that he washed away my sins. I believe that he's made me whole. I believe that now I die with Christ. I believe I was crucified with Christ. I believe I was buried with Christ. I believe I rose with Christ. Yeah, now I'm powered through the Holy Ghost. 
Yeah, I, I believe that by faith. I believe it by faith. Not by works. Not by works. I believe it by faith in what Christ did upon Calvary. I want to take us back to the book. I, I'm on the worksheet, but I want to take us to the book. I want to take us to the book, and I want to see what King David said. You know, the one that uh, uh, committed adultery uh, 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 with Bathsheba. You know the one that I'm talking about? The one that sent her husband and put him on the front line that he may be killed to try to cover up that he hadn't slept with his his wife and and, 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 and had a child by her. Uh-huh. And he did that. Now, this is what King David said. This is, this is pay attention. It said, even as, in, in, in chapter 4, here it is. King David said it like this. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man, who God imputes righteousness without work. Let's say righteousness without work. Righteousness without work. He said, saying this, now pay attention. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. That sin after sin after sin after sin, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. How are they covered? Covered with the blood of Jesus. Your sins, the only way your sins can be covered is you come before the cross as a sinner. As an ungodly person and accept Christ as your savior. And guess what? Your sins are covered. Don't let nobody tell you no other way. If you come before the cross of Christ and believe by faith that he has saved you from your sin. God did not make a mistake when he, when he, when he nailed his son unto the cross. He done it because he loved you. The scripture said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish. And it don't matter who you are. It don't matter where you are. You are a sinner. You come before God as a sinner and receive the Savior. Why would God have to send the Savior? Everybody say, he's the Savior. He's the Savior. Well, what did he save you from? What did he save you from? He saved you from yourself. He saved you from sin. He saved you from the wrath to come. He saved us from hell. He saved us from perishing. Because the wages of sin is death. And it's everlasting death. Okay? It, it ain't no tomorrow when I get there. I got enough points that I can come. No, when you're dead and you're dead in sin, you're going to hell. But when you die in Christ, you have everlasting life. The Bible said to be absent, to be present with the Lord, to be Absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? But the Bible also says that the wages of sin is death. So what did Christ come? Christ came to take the wages of sin and nail them to the cross. He took the wrath of God. He took the whole wrath of God on the cross. That's why David said, bless. Now when you want to tell somebody you bless, you, you tell them you bless because you're saved. I, I don't want to hear nobody, I'm blessed because I got a brand new car. That ain't blessed, that's just material stuff. It can burn up tomorrow, it sure ain't give you another. It'll burn up the next day, it can go off in the river. It ain't no good, it rust out. That ain't, that ain't blessed, that's just stuff. He said, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. I would much rather know that I've been born again and saved from the wrath to come than any other materialistic or any other thing that I can put in this world. Flesh. I was on my way to hell. I don't know about you. You won't admit you was on your way to hell. I was on my way to hell. I thank God that he reached way down and saved me. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God that I, I ain't going to hell now. I ain't going to hell now. Well, how you say that, uh, preacher, you act like you being, no, I'm being bold in Christ. Christ paid the sin debt. He paid the debt. If, if somebody come to tell you that, look, man, I'm going to pay all your bills. I'm going to pay all your bills. I want to come bring your bills to me. I'm going to pay every one of them. And when you go up to the thing and they say paid in full, and you go up there and say, well, is it anything? I want to put something out there, man. We just told you it's paid in full. Well, can I do just one thing? No, man, I just told you your bills are paid in full. See, this is the problem right now with, with so-called believers. We still think there's something we got to pay. 
but Christ paid the sin debt. Amen? And But we want to make it about us because our flesh feels like it's something that we got to, we were justified by faith. Not by works that any man should vote. We need to get this. We really need to get this because so many of us remain in bondage because it, oh, I've just got to do this because I know God looking at me and I just need to be right with God and I want to make it to heaven. If I don't do, guess what? Christ has already paid the debt. He paid the debt. It's paid. It's stamped in full. It's paid. It's paid in full. There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we can do to deserve what Christ has already done. I got so excited just then that I knocked the, uh, the phone down. But we just got to understand that this is what Romans 4 is telling us, that we are justified by faith. And David said in that, David said, blessed are they who iniquities are forgiven. And it said, blessed is the man. This is the part. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Blessed is the man who God will not impute sin. Stop thinking that you can do anything to gain your salvation. Stop. David said, blessed is the man that God will impute your sins to you no more. Stop allowing people to say, oh man, you sinned and you did it. My sins have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. I walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. The flesh man sin all day, but the spirit man cannot sin. Holy Ghost can't sin. See, this is why we got to get it off of us and put it all on Jesus. And if you keep it on you, then guess what? You continuously stay uh, lost and you'll stay in bondage because you're thinking it's something that I can do in my flesh. You have been justified. By what Jesus did up on the cross. Amen. Come on now. We can't take nothing from Jesus. Period. You can't take nothing. Well let me stand in there walking. And you can't walk in Jesus shoes. You can't take the wrath of God. Because the wrath of God will send you straight to hell. Man we got to get this. We, we really need to get this. So we can quit tossing and turning about who you are. You, in your flesh you are sinful. In the spirit and you're a believer, then guess what? You can't sin. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Christ cannot sin. Greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. In we what? The flesh man? No, in my spirit man. Come on now. Flesh man sin all day. Sure will. He probably sinning right now because you're thinking something foolish about me by preaching Jesus. But I ain't going to preach nothing but Jesus. Amen. Come on, here we go. Here it is in the, on our little worksheet. It said, but to him who believes. Then one of the things said, oh, by all oh, oh, to do something. That's the flesh man. Here go the spirit of God. But to him who believes. Then the flesh man will say, well, shouldn't I just join the church and be baptized? Then the spirit man will say, but to him who believes. Then the, then the flesh man will say this. Shouldn't I promise God that I'll do better with my life? Then the flesh man said, then the spirit man will say this, but to him who believes, then the flesh will say, but don't you think I ought to offer God something? Then no. Then he go to spirit man and say this, but to him who believes. And then it said, the flesh man will do this. I'm happy to work for my salvation. You can't work for your salvation. You can't work for it. You, you there ain't nothing you can do to get him. You can give God that He'll be pleased with if it ain't in Christ. And everything we ought to want to give, it ought to be in Christ. That we'll say we take no, uh, I take no uh, uh, credit for nothing. I put it all on Jesus. I don't want no credit. I don't. I, I'm all. I don't have no confidence in this flesh. I got it all in Christ. Greater He that is in me than He that is in the world. It's all on Christ. Oh, man, I know that hurts some people there because don't nobody want to never say it's all in Jesus. It's all in Jesus. It, I give, it's all in God. It, glory be to God. I, I don't take no, I don't want no credit. It's all to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. No, they say, well, God is in you. Yeah, but glory, God get the glory. Yeah. Well, Christ did this. Thing. Yeah, he did. And I thank him too. And he get all the, uh, all the credit. I don't want no credit. <laughs> he paid the debt. He did it. He did it all. Glory be to God. Come on, here it is. Uh, look back at the verse, what we just said. Who does God justify? The scripture said God just the un, 
He, he justifies the ungodly. He justifies the sinner. Why would I need to be justified if I'm not a sinner? Why would I need to be justified if I was already righteous? It, it, this is what it said. God does not justify good people. God justifies the ungodly. The worst kind of people. Okay? The only people God saves are the ungodly people who has never... God has never saved a good person. Why? Because God gave Jesus... I thank God gave Jesus for sin, didn't it? And that's what it said. I think God gave Jesus for the sins of the world. And then with the bite, God gave Jesus for the sins of the world. So that means if a person is saved, that means that he had to come before Christ as a sinner, right? I think that like one plus one equal two, I think that in another way for me to be saved that I had to admit that I was a sinner. Because if I want a sinner, then I didn't need to be saved. This is the problem we have today. Don't nobody want to say they're a sinner. So in other words, you can't be saved until you admit you're a sinner. This is what the word is saying. You had to come before God as ungodly. You had to become before him as a sinner. And you got to know that it's not because of nothing that you work. There's nothing in you. It's in Christ. It's in Christ. It's in Christ. It, everything is in Christ. Our hearts are so hard that we're scared to say it, it's in Christ. We're so self-righteous that we won't just say, I put it all on the cross. We're so self-righteous we won't say, I don't is I, I just put it all on Jesus. Amen. But you know why it's like that? Because we've been taught that all our lives. We've been talking about all the Daniel and the lions then and 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 and, and uh, slanging Goliath and all this stuff. But don't nobody want to really truly preach the true gospel. It's all about Jesus Christ. We have salvation because of what Jesus did upon that cross. If you don't start there, then you make the whole gospel of none effect. you got to start at the cross. This is why we're justified, guys. I want us to see what, but what, how we're justified by believing, by believing that God gave his only begotten son. We're justified believing upon what Christ did upon the cross. We justify by believing of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We, we, we justify by coming before God as a sinner and admitting that you fall short. Admit that you don't get it right all the time. Admit that you need a new spirit in you. Admit that you need to be born again. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You, and the only way you can see this is that you be born again. And the only way you can see this is you be born again. Amen. Come on. I got to go. I got to go. The Lord Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's Luke 5 and 32. Go back and read it. I have not called, I not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Luke 5 and 32. He came to give his life a ransom for many. Matthew 20 verse 28. Christ gave his life for the ungodly. Christ, the ungodly, Christ came to die for sin. Christ came to die for sin. God did not send his son to die for a bunch of people that said, well, we good. We the best. We all, we got it going on. Well, how you got it going on when all flesh and, and, and all righteousness of man is un, unprofitable to God? God looked down and said, Yo, that's a filthy rag. Well, how can I come before him in my own flesh and say, God, I'm coming before you because I know I deserve it. How? You're a sinner. And all the, way you, all the way that you can be saved is that you accept Christ as Savior. And then you'll be saved. Then the Holy Spirit will fall upon you. You'll be born again. Then he put a new mind in you. he put a new heart in you. God does that. Any man can't, I'm going to school so I can train to get a new mind. Y'all, you're going to do is get more brainwashed to think that you're more than what you are. <laughs> because your flesh is going to feed your flesh, man. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is what convicts. Holy Ghost is what converts. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost converts. Holy verse convicts. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost. How? When I come before God as a sinner. And he repent and turn from all my thinking. And guess what? And I have a change of heart put in me. Have a change of mind put in me. Hallelujah. I'm a new creature. I'm a, I'm a new creation. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. It ain't because of something that I did. It's because of the justification that Christ did upon Calvary. Amen. We got to put it all on Christ. 
I used to hear them some of them young boys be talking about, I put it all on mama. I ain't put nothing on mama. I put it all on Jesus. See, we got to come up out of this flesh stuff. I put it all on my brother. I, don't, I put it all on Jesus. I put it all on my dad. Now I put it all on Jesus. Why? Because he's my peace. Why? Because he's a way maker. Why? Because he is glorified. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's my savior. Why? Because he's the Lord. Hallelujah. He laid down his life. He said that he came to give us life and give it to him more abundantly. Why can't we accept the justification of Jesus Christ? It ain't good enough. <laughs> this, is what, this is what Romans 4 is saying. Man, we got to really understand. He, Paul is saying, look, quit all this dead work that you're doing thinking that you're going to get saved by that. Quit doing all this foolishness thinking that I'm, God is looking down and saying, well, I'm so pleased with all you're doing, son. No, he ain't. If you're doing it in your flesh, no, I'm not. He is not. He's not pleased with that. He pleased when you come before him as a son and admit your son, admit I can't do nothing without the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't do nothing without you, God. I'm nothing without you, God. I'm nothing without you, God. I need the power of the Holy Ghost. I need the resurrection power that belongs only to God. I need the Savior. I need the blood of Jesus to cover me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I need to go down in the grave and come back up and be resurrected with Jesus. That's the resurrection power of the gospel. That is what justified the believer. Amen? We, we, we really need to get this, uh, guys. We really need to get this. I'm talking to believers, and I'm talking to somebody that might not have accepted Christ as your Savior right now. It's time right now. It's high time that we wake up. Today is the day of salvation. And we need to make this more about Jesus day by day by day because it's getting late in the season. It's getting late right now. It's getting late. If you look around the world, it's getting late right now. If you look around the world, it's looking really like them in times right now. And we need to be offering Christ Jesus to somebody. Uh, uh, we need to be offering Jesus. We need to open up our mouth and allow the gospel to come out that souls be saved. While we're around trying to nitpick people and tell them, you need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. You need to. A dead man can't stop doing nothing until he's born again. And you still might not stop everything then. You're going to put it all on Christ. This is what this justification is talking about. Amen? Abraham believed God. And when we believe God as believers, he justifies us. Believers, don't let nobody tell you that you ain't justified. Take them to the scripture. Take them to, to, to uh, Romans 4. Take them all throughout the book of Romans. And let us know. How, let, let's see how we are justified. I, I, I want to finish this tonight, but I know I ain't because I started late. Here it is. If you have never come before God as a sinner for salvation, you're not saved. So we might as well go and get that out there. If you never came before God as a sinner, then I'm going to go and tell you right now that you ain't saved. I, I, I put a pause in there because I want you to think about it. I want all of us to think about it. When you came to Christ, did you admit that you was a sinner? I want, I want the body of believers. I want the body of believers, and I want somebody, whoever listening in today, when you came before the cross, or when you got saved, did the preacher just say, come up and shook your hand and say, yes, you saved now? Then you're not saved. Until you admit your sin, until you admit you fall short of the glory of God, until you come before God as a sinner, you cannot be saved. I, 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 that's the Bible. That's the Bible. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So if the wages of sin is death, and if I never came before God as a sinner, then guess what my, my wage is going to be? Death. But if I come before God and accept him as my savior, accept Jesus as my savior, as a sinner, then he promised me everlasting life. You see the difference? You see the difference? God, if you came before God and said, well, I just came because I just need to get my life in order. And the man said, well, you came to the right place and I'm offer you Jesus and he'll save you. Then that ain't, it, that don't work. It don't work like that. Because you came saying that you might be all right. No, you got to come before him as a sinner. And admit you're a sinner. Admit you're ungodly. Admit you fall short. 
Because the Bible said we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We all. A-L-L. -L. We all. 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 Preacher. Pope. Bishop. Whatever thing you want to title, you want pastor. We all fall short. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Why? Because Adam and Eve made us sinners in the garden. When they fell in the garden, man fell in the garden. That's why we're living in a fallen world right now. So what I'm saying here is that, that, that the Lord Jesus says like that, I have come, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance, okay? This is what the this is what Bible teaches, okay? If you have never come to God as a sinner for salvation, you're not saved. I got to put it out there. Until you come as a sinner to God, he cannot save you. God saves sinners only. Well, why you say that, Pastor? Well, God came, get, God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth of him should not perish. What is perishing? That means go to hell. That means going, to, they say he that does not believe is already condemned. So that means if you came before him and if you don't admit you're a sinner, then you're still condemned. You're still in your sin. You're still lost. You're still dead. You haven't been born again. I, I, we, I, I want to teach this. I want to teach this thoroughly because I want us to understand that the only way that man can be saved is that he accepts Christ as his Savior. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. That's the only way. He said the only way that man, anybody can get to God is to come through the Son. The only way to get to God is to come to Jesus. Amen? He reconciled us back to God. He redeemed us from the wrath to come. He redeemed us and brought us back to God. He reconciled us back to the Father. Amen? It was because of Jesus that we're able to stand right now uh, and God is able to look upon us as saved. That's, that's, that's the only way. Okay? Okay? Many people would rather defend their dignity or their stature in life rather than let God save them. So many people are self-righteous. So many people, well, I raised up over in such and such part of town. All my folks did this, and my daddy was a pastor, and this, that, the other. But have you ever came before God as a sinner? Well, my daddy was a deacon. Have you ever came before God as a sinner? <laughs> my mother went to church. I went to church every. Have you ever came before God as a sinner? You, you might want to think about that today. Because I know I had to come. I had to come back. I had to come before and as a sinner. Before I got really got born again. I had to admit who I was. Yeah, I, be, I went to church as a youngster, but I didn't know no different. Because I ain't, most times I heard about stuff and all I heard a man do, um, and um, and um, and uh, and um, and, and uh. I ain't, that can't say nobody. Um, mm, and uh. I need to hear the word. And I, and I finally got saved as I got older. Because I heard the word. And, and, and then this is what saves. Uh, because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can't nobody hear nobody when they're mm and lying. And just screaming and hollering. This word is living word. You need to know that you've been justified if you've been saved. You need, can't let nobody tell you that you weren't justified because you don't go to a certain church with a certain name behind it. You need to know that you're justified by what Christ did upon the cross. Nothing else. You need to understand that you're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did and nothing else. You need to understand that you stand before you right now with a new nature and, a, 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 and an old nature as a believer. And guess what? The, the non-believer, he still just got one nature. He's still dead in his trespass. He's still walking dead, man. Dead man walking. He All he got is the old nature. Why? Because he had not been born again yet. So we got to understand this. We, are, we get so mad at people in the world and we don't understand that they're in the world if they hadn't accepted Christ yet, they're still dead. They're still in sin. They're still dead. They don't have Christ yet. So they can't help but be dead. They're dead. They're walking dead. It's you who's been quickened through the power of the Holy Ghost. Once you accept Christ as your Savior, then you're quickened. You're made alive. Now you got two natures. You old man still out, but you got the new man now. The old man is dead in sin. The new man is powered through the power of the Holy Ghost. We got to get that. Come on, here, here we go. If you if you never came to God, I got that. Abraham simply believed God, 
and that belief was credited to his account as righteous. It was credited to his account as righteousness. God did not only subtract Abraham's sin through justification by faith, but he added the righteousness of Christ to Abraham's account. The addition of the righteousness of Christ to the sinner's account is what makes it possible for the sinners saved by grace to stand in his presence completely justified in his sight. Let me read that again now. Christ to the sinner's account, uh, the addition of the righteousness of Christ to the sinner's account is what makes it possible for the sinners to be saved by grace to stand in his presence completely justified in his sight. It's all in Christ, guys. It's all in Christ. We're justified in what Christ did upon the cross. The only way God looks down at us is that he sees Christ, the righteousness of Christ. That is how we're justified. We're not justified about nothing we do in our flesh. We can never, we never have been, never will be, <clears throat> never can be. It's impossible for God to justify flesh. Okay? Okay, let's get this right. It's impossible for God to justify flesh. If somebody tell you they say because they did so much, or they go to church, this, that, the other, or this because they gave a million dollars to somebody, whoever you gave a million dollars to, they're probably real glad that they got it, but it's nothing that, that ain't do nothing for your salvation. Yeah, as, as a born-again believer, and as you save, and if you want to give a million dollars to the gospel, glory be to God for it, you still don't get no credit for it. God gets the glory. <laughs> God even get the glory then. Yeah, God gets the glory then. He gets the glory out of everything. Well, how you get the million dollars? God had to allow you to get the million dollars. Because it's because of him that we live, move, and have our very existence. So we got to keep it all in Christ. We got to keep it all in Christ. Come on. I, I, I need to get help. I need to get really understand. We really need to understand who we are minus Christ. Okay? We really need to understand who we are minus Christ. You remember that little dash, minus Christ. Man need to understand who he is minus Christ. Minus Christ, you're a sinner. You are ungodly. You are perishing without Christ. Minus Christ, you're not justified. Plus Christ, in Christ, you're saved. You're justified. You're redeemed. You're reconciled. You have joy. You have peace. You have uh, love, you have, uh, oh, you got fruit of the Spirit through the power of the Holy Ghost. See, this is uh, those that are justified. So, justified and not justified. The unbeliever is not justified. The believer has been justified because of what he believed Christ did upon the cross. And we're justified through him. The righteousness of God in Christ is given us as we begin to, as we become born again believers as we come before the cross as sinners and allow God to seal us with the power of the Holy seal us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are we are we getting there tonight? I want us to go. I want us to go. I want us to go. God tells us who we are, and we come to Him on His terms and His terms alone. Okay. The Lord Jesus said, "No one comes to the Father." Except through me. That's John 14 and 6. No man comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said that. The only way to the Father is through the Son. That's why when we pray, we say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. It, you got to, the only way you can get to the Father is through the Son. It, you can't get... It. If you try to get in the other way, the, the, the Bible says you're, you're, you're a thief and a robber. The only way you can get to the Father is through the Son. You got to come through Jesus. You got to come to the cross. And I, 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 I want to preach and teach this to the body of believers so we can take all of it off us and put it right back on Jesus where it's supposed to be. And I, I promise you, that burden that's on you now because you're trying to work out your salvation and you're trying to do this to be saved, if you just take all that burden off of you and put it all on Jesus Christ, I promise you you'll sleep better at night. Yeah, I promise you have more peace. 
I promise you you'll have more joy. Being justified by faith produces wonderful results in our lives. Why? Because Romans 5 and 1 says it like this. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's Romans 5 and 1, guys. This, this, when we put it all on Jesus, when we put it all on Jesus, when we are justified by faith to what he did, God gives us this. He gives us this to produce wonderful results in our lives. How? As a believer in Jesus Christ, you now possess these things. It's eight of them I have here. And I'm going to try to get a few of them. Because I, I started late. I, want, I, got, I got to give you what I got tonight. I started late, but you got to get this tonight. We have peace with God, which is one. The scripture is Romans 5 and 1. Write it down. We have peace with God. As a believer, okay, believing in just like I told you earlier, believing in just that way, okay, we believe in that if we put it all on Christ, it's nothing about the works that we've done, the work that we're doing, we're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did upon Christ, on, on the cross, and Christ alone, not by works that any man should boast, okay, but strictly coming before God as a sinner, as ungodly, and recognizing that, and being saved by His grace, okay, here it is. Guess what else we have? We have access to God. We have access to God. How? Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. That's Romans 5, 2 and 8. God's child has access to a heavenly father who listens to him. It is, a one, it is wonderful having someone to turn and talk to about our problems. Guess what? He always hears and answers. And sometimes he shows he is a good father by saying no. Remember that. Sometimes you be asking for something in your flesh and God say no and you don't get it. He's he 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 being a good father to you a lot of times. Because sometimes you, you you asking for things that 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 ain't lining up with his will. And when he say no, guess what? You give him the glory. Amen. He answers according to his wisdom, not to ours, okay? His wisdom. Amen. Then we have, this is number three. We have hope. And it said, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. This is Romans 5, 2b. 5, 2b. Romans 2, 5b. Hope. We have hope that we're children of God. We're, we're believers in Christ Jesus. We have hope. Okay. The child of God has a blessed hope and to return uh, and the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to earth. And guess what it says? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 8, 14, 4, 13 through 18, 1, 2, 3, and 17. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Okay? Worldly wisdom did not come uh, in the words of affliction, okay, and joy. But the child of God can be confident that all things are under God's control for his good and his glory. When you're going through trials, when you're going through tribulations, as a born-again believer, you got to still understand that all things work for the good of those who love the Lord. You got to understand that God is still in control. You got to understand that 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 that, that, that tribulation uh, produces perseverance. So you'll be able to go through the next trial. Till you go through the next tribulation. Why? Because we trust and believe God for all things. Amen. And, and, and it's not the worldly wisdom that we look for. Our wisdom comes from above. We, we, our wisdom comes from above. Amen. Here it is. Love. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts. Romans 5 and 5. What kind of love is this verse describing? Love for our fellow man. No. Uh, that's <laughs> Come on, we got to understand this. Love for God. No. The love poured out. Uh, poured out in us is the assurance that God loves us. 
You got to understand that the love that we're talking about, the love as a believer, that we understand that God loves us. God loves us. You need to understand that. God loves us. When it's hard, God loves you. When it's in between, God loves you. When you're going through whatever, God loves you. God loves you. There, man, uh, uh, we got to understand that God knows and he loves us regardless of what the situation looks like. God loves you. God loves you. And you need to just change that God loves me. Why? Through his son, Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you. He saved us from the hell. He saved us from wrath to come. He loves us. He forgives us. He gives us the power of the Holy Ghost. God loves us. The way that we can see from day to day is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God loves us. Amen? We got to understand that God loves us. Okay? Okay? Then not only that, the Holy Spirit. Okay? The love of God has been poured out of us in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us, Romans 5 and 5. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes real the love of God in the hearts of believers. To face life today, we must be very conscious of the fact that God loves us. We got to be conscious of that. We got to be conscious of that. God loves us. Okay? Here it is. Here it is. Deliverance from the wrath to come. Much more than that, having now been justified by the blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through who? Jesus, through him. We shall be saved from the wrath to come through Jesus Christ. That's Romans 5 and 9. What is the wrath from which we, was get, we are saved? Jesus called it in the great tribulation. Believers have been saved from the penalty of sin. He is constantly saying to us, from the power of sin. He's saving us from the power of sin. He's saving us from the power of sin. And he's going to save us in the future from the presence of sin. This means every believer will leave the earth at the rapture. We are saved from the wrath through Christ. We are saved from the wrath through Christ. Okay? Joy is our last one. And not only that, but we also rejoice and God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. God, have, we have been reconciled back to God through what Jesus did up on the cross. He reconciled us. He has set us free. He has brought us back. We have joy in God. We have worked out. We have a worked out plan to save us because he worked out a plan to save us because of his great love for us. Rejoice in God for these wonderful benefits of salvation, okay? Peace with God, access to God, hope, love, the, the Holy Spirit, deliverance from wrath, and joy. This is the power of God. This is what he promised us. This is what Christ accomplished up on the cross. It might be somebody today that's listening in that haven't accepted Christ as your Savior tonight. Right now, I, 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 I ask that, that, that if you haven't accepted Christ, come before him today. You've heard the gospel. You heard that the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what saved when we believe. When we believe that he died for our sins. When we believe that, and when we believe that he saved us by grace. When we come before him as a sinner, and come before him as ungodly and accept him as savior. Have you done that today? Have you done that today? Body of believers, I, I pray today that 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 the scripture was 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 came alive to you. That we understand that it's all about Christ. It's all in Christ. It's all that we're justified through what Christ did up on the cross. That we understand that it's nothing that we work for. There's nothing that we deserve, that it was given to us by grace through faith in what Christ did upon the cross. I, I, I offer Christ to somebody tonight that may not be saved. Tonight is the night of your salvation. If you will come tonight and accept Christ as your Savior. Body of believers, I pray that you were strengthened through the power of the Holy Ghost 
through hearing the scripture tonight. Continue to allow the scriptures to feed your spirit, man. Continue to allow God to, to, to speak to you uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? This is how we are strengthened. This is how we're able to go out and tell a, a dying world about our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is how we're able to uh, uh, acknowledge those uh, that haven't been saved. It's all in Jesus. It's all in our testimony is about Jesus Christ. Okay? He came. He came to save the sinner. He came to save the ungodly. And our faith is in Christ. And we understand that God loves us as the body of believer. God loves us through what Christ did up on that cross. We thank God tonight. Father God, we thank you today, Lord God, that, that you allowed us to come tonight, Lord God, and learn your word, Lord God, and hear your word. Father God, we pray tonight, if, if it be one that heard the word today, that heard the gospel, and wanted to be saved, Lord, that they will come before you right now as a sinner, Lord, and receive you as their Savior. Lord God, we pray right now that not only that, that those that have been saved and those of the body of believers, Lord God, will be strengthening through your words, strengthen through the scripture tonight, Lord God, to even see that you get all the glory, you get all the praise, and you get all the honor. Lord, we just lift our hands unto you, O oh God, and we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity once again, Lord God, to dwell in your word and to hear your word. Father God, we thank you, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray, and we say amen. God bless you, God keep you, continue to stand in Christ. The only way that you can stand is in Christ. We thank God. We bless God for each and every one of you believers that chimed in today. We bless God for you. We thank God for you. I love you. I love you. I love you. But God loves you even more. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Good night.